Greetings everyone. Welcome to the PDF ID typeface library tutorial. Today we want to go over the typeface library panel available in PDF ID. Most of you are well aware of PDF ID's amazing capability in converting PDFs and Windows XPS files to well-structured and fully editable InDesign files. Today with this tutorial we'd like to expose you to some of the more advanced features of PDF ID. Specifically, the typeface library and its close integration with the font substitution panel. What we see here on the screen is a conversion settings view of the PDF ID options window. Let's just view the font substitution panel to get reacquainted with it. So what we want to do is click here and reveal the font substitution panel. So here the font substitution panel appears and as expected it lists all fonts in the PDF file that couldn't be matched against what we have in the system. So here we have the fonts on the left that it couldn't match against what I have in my system. Any font mappings done here are permanently stored in the typeface library so that you don't have to repeat this substitution process again. It's easy to realize the important role the font substitution panel plays in order to achieve the best PDF to InDesign conversion. What we want to do now is to jump right into the typeface library. To do that, we click typeface library and reveal the typeface library panel. We see the various settings that are available. Let's just go over each one of these. We first have set typeface library button. This allows you to specify the location where the typeface library should be stored. Though this seems like a simple setting, it actually has powerful implications. Let's say there are five users using PDF to ID in a small network environment. What you can do is specify a common location, like in a centralized server, that everyone has access to, to store the typeface library. This allows everyone to share a common typeface library instead of each person having a unique copy. So what we do is just click here on this button. We can then set a certain location, let's say it could be any kind of server, and everyone gets to use the same typeface library. Next we have the section that lists the font names stored in the typeface library right over here. These are font names that have been stored in the typeface library and its associated mappings on the right. This is the font list. You can actually change the mappings here by clicking on a different font and clicking save changes. So when we click say mini and bold, it's been mapped to mini and pro bold, but we can actually go and say mini and bold should map to mini and pro bold. All we have to do is click this and click Save Changes. And when we say Save Changes, it brings up this dialog here asking whether we want to confirm the font mapping changes. We say click, click Cancel. It'll cancel the changes. Um, but we could also revert the changes so that everything is restored to its normal state. Then we have a checkbox that says Add font substitutions made into the typeface library, which is right over here. This setting controls whether you want the font mappings made in the font substitution panel to be recorded into the typeface library. You can actually stop recording your mappings by turning this setting off. So if you turn this off, it'll stop recording any kind of changes to the typeface library. After that, we have activate and use typeface library. This setting controls whether you want to use the typeface library or not. You can actually disable its usage by unchecking this. It's interesting to note that we provided such an option, but we felt that every aspect of the typeface library should be under the user's control. We wanted you to have control over this. Finally, we have, and we have this option over here, when overriding fonts matched via the typeface library, replace existing font mapping. It's a very long title. This is a really interesting option we added. Let's presume a PDF file you converted contained a font called Skia, but you don't have this font. So during the conversion process, you mapped the font Skia to Myriad Pro. A few months have passed, and you're about to convert another PDF file which has the font named Skia again, but now you've acquired a font called Skia Pro in your system, which is similar to Skia. As the typeface library remembers that you've set Skia to map to Myriad Pro, it will map it to Myriad Pro. 
However, since you now have Skia Pro in your system, what you're going to do is what you would normally do is substitute Skia with Skia Pro. That's okay for this time. Let's say you're converting at this time. But what we want to do is permanently replace the mapping in the typeface library. One option is to you know, basically go and edit the fonts over here, you click and assign a new font over here. Or better yet, by having the setting on, it instructs PDF to ID to permanently replace the mapping of the typeface library with the latest font substitutions you've made. So there's no need to manually edit the typeface library. That's kind of cool because you know you always get to record the latest settings. Whatever settings changes you make within this area, you need to click Save Settings, which is Save Settings over here, so that it gets reflected. Well, that's it with the typeface library. Um, we hope we were able to help you understand how configurable the typeface library is within PDF to ID. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.reclosoft.com. That's www.reclosoft.com. Thank you.